a wonderful day in West Virginia. Welcome to the Daily 304 Innovators and Entrepreneurs Show. Here at the Daily 304, we are committed to sharing the wealth, beauty, opportunity, and innovation that's here in wonderful Almost Heaven, West Virginia. Twice a month, we introduce you to the innovators and entrepreneurs in our state and dig a little deeper into their companies, their work, their purpose, and the reasons they are here in the Mountain State and proud to call themselves West Virginians. Today, we are joined by Dr. Joe McNeil. He's the director of the Appalachian Hardwood Center and a professor in wood science and technology at West Virginia University with several publications to his name. Dr. McNeil, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We're really excited to learn a little bit more about your work and what you do at West Virginia University. The organization you lead now has been around since the 80s. Can you explain to our viewers and listeners um, a little bit about the history and how things have changed during that time since the organization began? Um, the organization is the Appalachian Hardwood Center at, uh, with, within the Division of Forestry and Natural Resources at West Virginia University. And our job is to basically keep um, the, the interests of the forest products industry in the state um, up to speed and to do research, applied research, to inform the industry of new developments and to help uh, create and promote new products as um, as things uh, uh, are invented or uh, developed uh, for for marketing. So we we have we did start in the early 80s, and our particular uh, focus at that time was looking at sawmills and boilers and um very very basic kinds of technology and since that time we have evolved to where we're looking at uh, what we like to, to term engineered wood products and those engineered wood products are um, effectively um they're made of composites of, of, of pieces of wood or of individual um pieces of lumber that really uh, are able to as a group, as, as a larger piece, uh, do more uh, in terms of strength and durability than an individual piece of lumber. Interesting, interesting. So before, it sounded more like the basic operation of how to harvest, package, and distribute uh, forest products and lumber to make things. And now you're taking that natural resource, looking at it in new and innovative ways to make different things. So in that regard, are there some really interesting or innovative projects that you are working on right now that you could share with our viewers? Uh, there are. There, there's one in particular. Um, we, we actually, in the state, you look at different companies that have, have taken on the use of, of hardwoods for uh, what they call structural purposes. Um, most often, uh, hardwoods are used for fine cabinets and furniture and, um, you know, really beautiful looking wood for appearance sake. And um, what we're seeing is that it also has a use for structural purposes like building houses or building large buildings. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where we're seeing most of the innovation and the new development occurring within the uh, uh, within the industry. The most recent sort of development is the uh, concept of cross laminated timber. And cross laminated timber is a project that we're uh, working on quite heavily. It basically involves the use of lumber uh, from low gray, low value yellow poplar again, and we make panels out of. Uh, three to five to seven laminates. So you're basically layering the products up um, and they're in cross sections with each other. And they create panels that are sort of like large Lego pieces that can be used to manufacture um, uh, modular homes. Um, they can be used to create multi-story buildings and all sorts of innovative things like that. Now the, the laminated structure, is that the one that is very similar in strength to other building materials it, it, what it is it's actually comparable to steel and concrete that's so correct you, so you can take wood and and replace in some buildings that are wood could also be built with steel and concrete we actually have uh i think i sent you a link to a a video that shows um the construction of an 18-story building so that building is um uh, it, it's, it meets all the code. Uh, it meets, it's a commercial uh, structure that, that is designed according to all the, the national design codes that are currently available. 
and um, it's it's a very sustainable product because uh, in contrast to the, all the energy that you you need to create the steel and to, to produce the concrete, um, you're actually not really doing that with cross laminated timber. You're actually storing that that carbon that's normally released. Um, you're storing it in the wood, and that stays in that building until it's demolished or uh, something happens to it. Can you tell me a reason why um, doing this research and, and creating these products and doing uh, and, and using these manufacturing opportunities and innovations, why is it good that it's here in West Virginia? What benefit do you get out of being located here? Well, first off, um, we have, uh, I, I would argue we have about 80% of the state is, is in forested land. And so we have a tremendous uh, resource here. Um, we, you know, a lot of people like to use what they call uh, growth to harvest ratios to estimate how, how much drain is occurring um, in a you know in a forest and almost within the, the state uh, almost every species is at oh it's well over uh, two to one in terms of that ratio in terms of growth to harvest which suggests that we are growing twice as much wood as it we're currently harvesting so we have a, a resource that is not only sustainable but um, it, it's available to harvest in great quantities without really affecting the sustainability of that, that forest. And so uh, that's one aspect of it. I guess the other aspect is that you you look at the industry in the state and we're, we're basically uh, creating, um, we're contributing at least three to four billion dollars in uh, financial growth to the state every year. And so that's a, you know, there's, there are, there are forest product companies uh, in almost every county in, in the 55 counties in West Virginia. So uh, it's an important industry. You want to see it grow. I, I certainly do. Mm -hmm. And I think um, as it grows, uh, you'll see better jobs, more jobs occurring as a result of that growth from the industry. So it's a very positive economic contributor. One last thing. Um, it's obviously a short, short feature here that we do. Can you explain to me the best way to connect with the research that you're doing or the information that you're, uh, you're, you're, you're working on or with the industry leadership? What would be the best way for us to connect with you and the industry in West Virginia? So you just looked up, you can just use AHC or Appalachian Hardwood Center, very easy to come up and uh, you can get hold of me. Um, and I would say, to be quite frank with you, um, uh, the West Virginia Forestry Association is a great um, uh, sort of way to contact the industry at large. Um, there's a fellow there, the executive director, Eric Carlson, who um, uh, does a great job interfacing between the public and the industry. And so you just look up West Virginia Forestry Association or WVFA uh, on, on Google and you'll find them. Well, wonderful. Thanks for providing that insight into the industry, Dr. McNeil. And we thank you for joining us here on The Daily 304. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to have gotten the opportunity to do this. Great. Have a and great I, day. I wish you great success. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for your leadership, sir. And thank you for watching. Be sure to follow us on all our social media channels at The Daily 304. You can also stay up to date with all the great things happening in beautiful Almost Heaven, West Virginia by heading over to wv.gov daily 304. We'll see you again in a couple weeks.